I'm going to talk today about um, digital microscopes and how they're beginning to overtake optical microscopes on the production floor and give you an idea of the reasoning and some of the benefits of a digital microscope. Um, here is a typical digital microscope, obviously a stand, a boom, and the camera out here on the end. So um, they're very simple to use. You place the board underneath and the image appears on a standard monitor. Um, of course, you see no eyepieces, so this is a completely digital system. The main reason why um, these digital systems have become popular is with the recent availability of a reasonably priced video camera that's um, high def and has a high enough frame rate such that a user will not notice any lag when watching the video and moving their their board underneath the camera. Um, so now you know uh, basically 1080p and a 60 hertz frame rate are fairly standard in a mid-priced microscope such as the ones we're talking about here today. Now the other thing is you know when you have um, something digital uh, obviously it opens up an environment for uh, adding, adding a built-in computer and and with a computer of course software applications so um, obviously on a uh, an optical microscope there's no capability of running software on it because it's a, a purely analog device so with these items in mind uh, and a couple of others which we'll talk about as well the um, the cost performance trade-off is sort of tipping towards uh, the digital systems now. On the on the people side, uh, there are some ergonomic and health benefits that um, probably no one's really thought about too much. Um, I'll discuss those in a future slide. Um, the other issue here is that uh, again, as I mentioned, these are very simple devices to use. They're autofocus. Um, basically, um, all you do is uh, you have a zoom in and out and maybe a capture button to capture an image. So again, very easy to use, minimal training for new operators. And um, the other thing is, you know, with without an eyepiece, everyone is looking at the same thing at the same time. So we have a screen. Um, if we're doing collaborative work, we're both looking at the screen. We're not going back and forth to an eyepiece. I'm, I'm sure we've all been there before where uh, someone uh, sets something up in the microscope and then you look in and you can't see what they're talking about and then they look in and they try and uh, position a pencil or something like that to point to what they want and then you look in and you know and so on it goes back and forth and back and forth. Here of course we're both looking at the same image at the same time so um, it makes collaborative teamwork real uh, really easy to, to perform. I talked about the software um, we have a lot of different software applications uh, for a lot of different fields. Uh, some of them are related to the agriculture industry, looking at seeds, others in the food industry. Um, but we have a handful of here that are, that are nicely um, designed uh, and usable in the electronics industry. Some of them are fairly um, uh, usable across all industries, but two of them have been designed specifically for electronics and that is the uh, DX overlay application that we have and also an image comparison application. And I'm going to demonstrate both of those applications in for you in a few moments. Um, we also have a ruler which is similar to a graticule on screen so you can make um, measurements right on screen. We also have another app uh, where you can make um, uh, substantially more accurate measurements, create annotations, and um, you know save save these images for uh, documentation purposes. We also have an application um, called focus stacking and what that does is it takes um, an image if you have um, an image where you have uh, items on there of various heights and due to the depth of field of the system you may have um, some of the uh, items in focus and some out of focus. So with focus stacking what we can do is um, take a stack of separate images at different focal points and then create one perfectly in focus image. 
For documentation purposes, we can add watermarks uh, to our images. And uh, we have another app that is um, sometimes kind of interesting uh, where we can uh, draw some verification lines, uh, have them on the screen superimposed over the live image. And this quickly allows operators to check uh, the dimensional properties of their uh, product. Now we talked about the ergo health benefits and um, what we found through various studies is that uh, you know when an operator is hunched over an optical microscope for an entire shift um, they oftentimes get a lot of uh, neck and shoulder pain and um, eye strain obviously particularly you know most likely if they wear um, glasses in the first place so of course you know we have no um, eyepieces here so we're just looking at a computer screen um, so the the person can be positioned in an ergonomic position and eliminate those strains the other uh, item that's come to light most recently with COVID is that um, eyepieces are actually quite um, unhygienic so if you have a bunch of people um, all putting their eyes on an eyepiece you know it's not um, it's not an ideal situation in this in this uh, in this COVID era. Um, obviously we have some benefits uh, related to these things and um, you know it, it just adds all adds up uh, in um, making the uh, digital decision a lot easier. We saw a picture of this particular microscope on the first screen um, with its uh, adjustable height stand it uh, really allows us to make use of a variety of different lens and lighting options here. So um, it allows us to go everything from, you know, a macro lens up to uh, in the range of five or 600x on magnification. So this system is um, mostly used in the lab or for uh, quality investigations. We have another microscope here, there's the camera, and this is on um, an arm, an adjustable arm. Uh, you can mount it on a bench and use it that way, but oftentimes we see this on the production floor, mounted over the top of uh, a conveyor. So uh, the operator can stop, stop the board right on the SMT line, uh, use the microscope, move it around, look at various different sections, and then either pass or fail uh, as you go. Uh, then this system here, you see this is on a fixed height stand and there's the camera out here on the end. So this system is designed for general inspection where basically you can just walk up, put the board down here and uh, do your inspection. It's a very, very simple, very easy to use system. Now I'm going to switch over and, uh, and do a demo. So, um, We'll switch my video. And there now we have um, the microscope. We have a live image. Uh, I know we talked about zero lag. It's certainly zero lag here. I don't know how it's turning out at the end of uh, at the end of the internet on your desk there, but um, so here we have a board uh, and we can adjust it here, obviously manually. Here's the zoom. I can zoom in with this lens. I can zoom into about 40x um, and we can move around. And one thing I'm fascinated to see on this board are these three inductors here. You can see one with, uh, with two turns, one with three turns, and one with four turns. So kind of an interesting, uh, interesting part. Anyways, what I'm going to show you on this uh, section of circuitry here is uh, the image compare application. So uh, let me get that rolling. I'll run that app and you see a little um, screen opens up at the top. So what we'll do here is um, we have templates that we can load. So if you're doing this in the production environment, what you would do is you would save your golden board as a template, and then you just recall the template and then put your sample board under and, and perform the uh, 
the comparison. Um, but for today, I'm going to actually create a template, and I'll show you how that uh, how that's done. So we basically work our way across here. So we capture our reference image, and um, when we put our sample board in, it's going to auto-align them, so we need to enter some uh, fiducial points here. So I'll just pick a couple of points. You just drag these guys over. Um, somewhere around opposite corners. I'm not going to be too accurate here, but uh, it'll be, you know, not too bad. Okay, and then what it will do is it will create the template, and now it'll create a live view with my uh, template uh, in the background. So I'm going to remove the board, and now we're seeing uh, the pad that I have underneath uh, superimposed under the board. So here's my, um, my sample board. So you can get it fairly close. You know, you can spend a lot of time and line it up, but since the tool is going to do that for you, you don't have to worry too much because it has the fiducials. So now I can capture the uh, sample. You saw how it automatically lined them up. And then I can come across here and I can toggle these two images. So that's a toggle between my, my golden board and now my sample board. So the nice thing about the toggle is that the eye is very quickly drawn to any changes. Um, so here you can see that um, there are very few changes. Uh, perhaps one noticeable exception. You may have noticed there's a uh, missing component um, at the top. And some others are just uh, some sh parts shifted around and looks like a change in a date code on that max part there. So. Um, so that gives you an idea of how this product works. We also have a split screen where we can show both at the same time or slide one back uh, across the other um, as well. So I'm going to close that off. Now, of course, we're back to a live image. So I'm going to put another board on here. And... Um, this particular board I have a DXF overlay for. Um, so we'll be using that to um, show you how the, the DFX overlay tool works. So back to my menu, DXF overlay. Now I have um, a variety of overlays saved. Basically, they're loaded on the microscope. And uh, this is the one for this particular board. So that brings it in. Oh, I can move this out of the way. You can see the overlay there. Um, we have uh, a little option here to enhance the contrast on the overlay. And then we have um, an option to center the search results. So I'll turn that on as well. <clears throat> So now I can, what I do is I put my board on there and I just manually line them up. It's basically as simple as that. Um, so that's it, they're lined up. Now this scales with the zoom. So if I zoom in or out, the overlay scales with it. And uh, now over here, I can enter in you know, what I'm looking for. Uh, so let's say we wanna find um, C116 and I'll say find. Now um, since I've clicked on uh, center the search you'll see what it's done. It's highlighted C116. Um, it's moved it to the center of the screen and um, now what I'm to do is move my board with it uh, and then I can find it on the board now, if I need to examine that part, I can zoom in and you can turn off the overlay. You can see there's a hide overlay option, or you can simply move it to the side, examine your part. I don't know what you have to examine for, you know, but in this case, it's there. It looks like it's well soldered. So I'm basically done. Uh, now, let's say we want to go and find uh, Q1. 
Um, again, uh, obviously, the, um, the board has moved, and we go and line it up, and that finds us uh, Q1. So what I'll do there, again, is move it to the side, and I can do my inspection. You can see it's present, and it looks like it's well soldered. So I've inspected my two components. Now what you can do here is you can enter a list of components um, that maybe you need to inspect on a board, or you can use um, a barcode to enter from a list of components and um, uh, go through a, a predetermined list. So it's a very handy system in that way. And this application was actually um, asked for by one of our customers. So we developed it basically to their spec, and um, and they've obviously been very happy with it. And that's um, that's something that Tagarno is actually very good about. They work closely with their customers, and um, if you need an app to do something specific on a microscope, or if you um, uh, need maybe a change to an app, then you know obviously we can run it by the R and D staff there and uh, see what can be done. So that's, um, that's my presentation for today. Um, I hope that uh, has given you um, a, good, uh, a good idea of some of the capabilities of the new digital microscopes um, uh, with all this, uh, this power built in now. And I'm sure that um, over time, it's just going to get uh, better and better. So um, we'll see fewer and fewer um, old analog microscopes. Uh, so we'll um, break uh, for now and see if we have any questions available. Thank you.